different types of honey. It's so beautiful. Hello and welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. It is still really snowy and cold out, so we are doing an inside job today. We have 28 frames of honey to spin out, and according to my calculations, it should be over 100 pounds of honey, which is going to be more than five gallons. So this is our first time using our honey spinner. It's a hand crank, so we're gonna be learning together today. I do have a frame or two of open honey. One of them I had in the freezer and this one's been sitting out. So this one may have actually dehydrated a little as it sat for a few months, but I want to check both of these open frames just to make sure that the moisture level is where it needs to be because most of the time the bees will leave the honey open if it's not at a proper moisture where it's gonna last forever. So we need it to be 20% or below, preferably it's 19% or below um, in order to spin it out and have it for long-term storage. If it's not at the right moisture content, I am just going to feed it to the bees when they start flying again. So this little tool is called a refractometer. It's really awesome. And apparently you're able to test milk with it as well as honey. I have not learned how to do anything with milk, but for honey, I'm just going to put a good gob of honey on this window here, close it, and then I'm able to look through here like a little spyglass, and inside of it is a little, I guess it's a scale of sorts that lets us know a few things about the contents of the window, and one of them is moisture content. So I've just taken my chopstick here and basically lined this window. We are below 19%. I'm gonna to try to show you. There it goes. See that? So this frame, this is safe to add to everything else. Most of the honey frames though, they have been fully capped, which means the bees know that this is of the correct moisture and they've capped it over for storage. So in order to get the honey out, we have to remove the cappings. And we have a couple different tools for taking the wax cappings off. And I think we're gonna have to use the uncapping scratcher because they haven't really built the comb out enough to where I think my uncapping knife is going to be really helpful. But I might try that first, let's see. That's why we have our uncapping tank here. So all the extra honey that does run down is actually going to land in a collection bin underneath and so we'll be able to get all that later. Oh, am I scraping it all off? Look at that. So some people heat the knife up and I don't know if this is why. Maybe. Okay. With this, you can use it one of two ways from what I understand. You can actually scratch at the comb like this or we can pick it off. The whole goal is to be able to maintain the honeycomb that the bees worked really hard to create so that I can spin the honey out and then reuse all of this comb in the springtime. See, it's taking it off a lot nicer. Like it may be somewhat more tedious, but this I have the patience for, I think. So when we stick this inside our honey spinner, we're going to want to angle it properly so that when the frame is spinning, all of the honey has the ability to spin out. So the bees actually angle the comb slightly downward and it was in the colony like this. So we want to be able to angle it to where it's going to spin out this way, if that makes sense. Now we gotta flip it and do the other side. The honey flies off. Yep, honey flies off, hits the side on the inside and then runs all the way down to the bottom. And eventually we open the honey gate and it pours out into the strainer. Well, that is significantly lighter. Wow, look at that. Yeah. And 
this frame, I just scratched instead of picked off the sheet of wax. So we're gonna see how well this one spins out. This one is really cool now that all the cappings are off you can tell the two different types of honey that the bees have made with at least two different types of flowers this honey is darker here and the bottom honey is obviously lighter isn't that neat this here is the one that i scratched instead of lifted off the cappings it didn't do as well with getting all of the honey out and I don't think I like how much wax that it leaves in the honey for my strainer to strain out. I have a 300 micron strainer down here and it's taking it sweet time. So this whole process might actually take us a little longer than we expected, but that's okay. Sun is still out. our uncapping knife that has a serrated edge and it seems to be working a lot better. I know there's a lot of people who like honey in their coffee and it's not something that I have been able to get behind yet, though I do keep trying because supposedly you need to try something 20 times before you can really decide whether you like it or not. So I would love to know if you like honey in your coffee and if you do, how do you prepare it? Because I haven't found a way that I really enjoy yet. It seems to be just a little bit too floral for me and it seems like the flavor of the coffee and the floral qualities of the honey just don't meld nicely for me. Anyways, so after all is said and done with those 28 frames that we spun out, we actually didn't end up doing all 28. I believe it was 26. One of them, I just really wasn't sure about the moisture content. So I'm just going to feed that back to the bees. And the other one had some finger digs out of it. So not that long ago, we actually hosted a whole bunch of homeschool kids here. And I pulled out a frame of honey and let the kids just have at it. And I kind of forgot about that. So we obviously didn't want a uh, little kid finger honey you know in the in the big batch so we did not spin that one but all in all we got this five gallon bucket all the way full plus three and a quarter gallons over here out of let's say 26 medium frames and that is astounding to me one of these weighs about four pounds so i need to do a little bit of math to figure out exactly how much poundage we got out of this particular honey harvest and that doesn't include the honey harvests that we have had in the past where we did a little bit of crush and strain earlier in the year and we also did harvest right around two and a half three gallons out of our flow hive super so we have already given tons of honey away and we're going to be keeping this five gallon bucket for ourselves and keeping this up for sale for the locals what took such a long time is our strainer that we have up here really has a lot of wax buildup in it and i think that it just Oh, 
it got kind of bogged down. You see it all in there? But I am gonna be able to take this wax and the wax from the cappings and render it down. And I plan on trying to make beeswax candles out of it. I have made plenty of salves using beeswax and salves and candles are basically where my brain stops in coming up with ideas. So if you have beeswax ideas, I would love to hear about those as well because we've got plenty of that. It's a beautiful, beautiful dark color, really surprising. It's not too bad. All I did was coffee, cream, and then honey. I might be, I might be turning my, my ways around with honey and the coffee. And if you're like me and you're starting to get spring fever now that the holidays have passed us, I'm gonna put my swarm catch playlist up here because there's some really awesome swarm catches up there that I think you'd like to see.